Now the question is in, d in development. What environment shapes fetal development? And the reason why the environment is important, as I showed you in tissue culture, the fate of the cell is controlled by the environment in which the cell lives. Whether it's just one cell or billions of the cells in a fetus, it's still the same response. So the question is, what environment is controlling the development of the fetus? No, it? Mama? The mom, absolutely. The mother's environment shapes the fetal environment. When a woman is having a baby and she visits an obstetrician, the obstetrician asks mainly three questions. Are you eating well? Are you taking vitamins and minerals? Are you getting exercise? Why so few questions? And the answer is this. Medicine believes the fetus is controlled by the genes, genetic determination. And so therefore, the development of the baby has nothing to do with the mother. And so therefore, uh, the mother's only role is to feed the baby. But as we talked about, the new science called epigenetics says that the environment controls the genes. Now think about this. This, this is an issue. Is there more in the mother's blood than just nutrition? Yes, emotions, yeah. the yeah. chemistry of emotions, the stress hormones, and all the other factors that control the mother's body also go into the placenta and affect the fetus. If the mother is happy, the chemistry of happiness makes the baby happy. If the mother is stressed or angry, the baby is stressed and angry. It's not the baby's brain that is controlling that. It is the response to the chemistry of the mother's blood. And now we know that the baby's brain is learning. Halfway through pregnancy, the brain starts learning. So the emotional patterns and behavior of the mother are being learned by the baby before it's born. But this does not leave the father out of the picture. Because if the father irritates or upsets the mother, then that is translated to the baby. And you might say, why should nature allow the mother to influence the baby so much? And the answer is this. When the baby is born, it will live in the environment that the mother experiences. So the mother is nature's head start program. It prepares the baby for the world that is, that, that is present when that baby is born. And that the influence of the mother and the chemistry of her blood influence the genetics of the child. So, for example, the experiences of the mother during World War II, and this is in, in the Netherlands, a scientific study, when there was not enough food and people were in starvation, the influence of the starvation on the mother was passed to and affected the genetics of the child. And when the child grew up and had her own baby, it passed the influence of starvation onto the next generation. In science, it's called the grandmother effect that the grandmother is influencing two generations. As I mentioned, medicine has said that all the development is just controlled by the genes of the baby, and that the brain and the nervous system of the fetus doesn't really work until just near birth. This is now proven to be totally wrong. That the baby, as I mentioned, is learning by midway through pregnancy. It's learning now. So if the father talks to the baby through the abdominal wall. The baby will learn the voice of the father, and when the baby is born and the father says any words, the baby will know which one the father is. And also it works with music because people play music to the baby and it learns the music before it's born. Now I'm going to show you a, an experiment, a sonogram. And it's a, a sonogram of a fetus, and there's an argument between the mother and the father. It's in Italian, but it doesn't make a difference because an argument is the same in any language. But what I want you to observe is the response of the fetus. Quando un bambino nasce, ha già again. un passato, Shall siete voi. Not, non dimenticatelo, perché nove mesi valgono una vita. Basta! Mi hai stufato! 
Non ti sopporto più! Non urlare, Siamo basta! Quando un bambino nasce, ha già un passato. Siete voi. Non dimenticate. The baby experiences everything the mother experiences. And if there are patterns, that's when the baby learns. So we were affected before we were born. The personality we have was being laid down before we were born. And in uh, uh, a new book called Why Love Matters by Susan Gerhardt, she describes how the brain develops and how our personality is already derived by two years of age. And that's the personality we will express through the rest of our lives until we change that. And I have been talking about how parents influence the genetics of the child. In a, in, and I say parents are genetic engineers because they shape the genetics of their child. And I've been talking about that for 20 years. And now finally science, and this is from Scientific American. And the conclusion, as I show, the findings suggest that a mother's parenting style can affect the activity of a child's genes. So there was a lot of responsibility in being a parent that we have not been aware of because we've always said genes control biology, but it's the environment that controls biology. Question. In the news and worldwide, we see an increase of autism and learning disabilities in children. And I can see now how that is connected. And the question is, can this trend also be reversed or improved? Uh, okay, two parts. I will make two answers. One, there is a, an epidemic increase in autism, yes. But it's not all due to negative environments. So it's not all the parents' fault. It's an influence of the field, uh, an influence of things believed, for example, like vaccines. And there might be an influence from spiritual, bringing in from the spiritual world. The question is, is there anything that can be done about it? And yes, the answer is, the answer is yes. One of, one of the most important things is if you catch it early, And the, you may ask, well, how would you know early? And this also brings up a, a, an important topic, which I'll expand on. When a baby is born, it has got an instinct to learn the parent's face within the first few days of birth. And you'll see when a, when a mother or a father is holding the baby, the baby will stare at the face. Within two, three weeks after the baby is born, The baby can distinguish on the basis of the eyes of the parents if the parents are happy or the parents are afraid or angry. And it's, it's a very important reason why the baby does this. It, because when a baby now is born, everything is new for the baby in the world. And the instinct of the baby when it comes across something new is to turn and look at the face of the parents. And if the parent looks like no, the baby will instantly learn that whatever that the baby was near was dangerous or shouldn't go near it, and it doesn't need to learn any more than that. It just looks at the face. And if the baby looks at the parent's face and sees that the father or the mother is happy when the baby is looking at something new, then the baby immediately knows that perception is that whatever that is, it is not bad. But you also might be familiar with this not just in babies, Because when a child is on a playground and falls down from a swing or some toy, or the baby or the child will look for the parents. And if the parents are in shock, the baby or the child will cry. And if the, if the child looks at the parent and the parents go, like, it's okay, the child will get up and everything will be okay. So the important fact is this. A child learns about the world first by studying the face and the eyes of the parents. And what's different about an autistic child, it doesn't look in the face, in the eyes of the parents. It will look at a mouth, but then the signals don't, don't make any sense. And uh, there is a book uh, about, uh, called Attachment Bonding by uh, a woman called Katie, K Katie Granju. And she describes how a, uh, uh, an adopted, uh, uh, an orphan baby, was autistic and would not look at the face of the caretaker. So the caretaker would feed the baby with a bottle, 
But if the baby did not look at her eyes, she took the bottle out. And soon the baby learned to feed by looking into the eyes of the, of the caretaker. And that baby was no longer, it grew up not to be autistic. And this is a parenting problem because most parents do not know that this important communication is going on. So they're not paying attention when the child is looking for information in their face. And this interferes with the instinct of learning. So if parents do not pay attention like this, then frequently the child then starts looking everywhere for some information and then loses its focus and attention. And it contributes to attention deficit disorder. Sorry. It's short. Yeah. yeah. You, you said that influence the field vaccines and maybe spiritual world. So in this context, what is spiritual world for you? To start with very quickly, I did not believe in the spiritual world. When I understood how the cells worked, I will show you this afternoon precisely what I mean by the spiritual world and how it connects to the cells. And it was interesting because I said, and, and, uh, and you asked a, uh, one woman asked a question about the scientist influencing the experiment. Well, I had no, no concept of the spiritual nature. I, that's why I was in science, because I was a mechanist. Uh, and the results of the experiments revealed the connection of us to the environment as our identity comes from the environment. So I'll talk about it later. This is a recent review from the journal Science. And it talks about the, where do the patterns of disease come from. And I will blow this up. And then this is what I'll read. Environmental processes influencing the propensity to disease in adulthood operate during the periconceptual, the fetal, and infant phases of life. So issues of cardiovascular disease, cancer, obesity, uh, diabetes, are all rooted in the earliest stages of our life, around the time of conception, fetal development, and the infant phases. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> this is uh, an experiment that was done in Japan where they were teaching the mother, before she had the baby, the mother a computer program. They taught her uh, how to turn on the computer and then a Japanese uh, script for a color would show up. And on the bottom of the screen was a color bar. And if she would select the right color to match the script, a coin would come out of the computer, and she could take the coin to a vending machine and buy, uh, and buy a treat. It took many, many months to teach the mother. Then she had a little baby chimp. And uh, the baby was so small it couldn't really walk yet. And the mother was doing the experiments. And uh, one day she gets the coin and goes to the vending machine and leaves the baby. And the baby pulls itself up to the computer, turns it on, the script comes up, selects the color, and then grabs the coin. And the scientists were, so, were shocked. Who taught the baby? The answer is very important. It suggests that infants pick up such skills solely by observation and don't have to be actively coached by their parents. This is exactly what happens to us when we are